What's up guys, welcome to the marketing analysis lecture. In this lecture, we're gonna be developing a plan to identify our market, uh, how do we reach our market, and then how do we keep or even increase our market. First thing we're gonna talk about is the P's of marketing, the P's of the marketing mix. There is four, five, seven, I've even seen nine. Uh, we'll look at the four that we're gonna talk about. Uh, that is product, uh, price, place, and promotion. Then, if you heard the five Ps, they usually include people, and then the seven would include the process and the physical environment. Now, you can see that uh, people, process, and physical environment can be uh, put into the four Ps that we're going to talk about. So, pretty much, it determines on how much you want to break apart. Uh, you can cover everything in four. Uh, I know a lot of people like five just because it separates people. Uh, but anyway, we'll be talking about uh, these four. So when you look at this, we got product, which uh, we're talking about quality, design, features, uh, variety, and packaging. So everything, they like said, comes into uh, the product, what you can do there. Uh, we also talk about price. How much are we going to list it for? Are we going to offer discounts? What's our payment period, credit, uh, and then place? What are the channels? Are we going to be retail? Are we going to be online? Uh, location, are we actually going to have a brick and mortar place? Uh, inventory, logistics, and then promotions, advertising, sales, marketing, and public relations. All right, first one though, we're going to talk about product here. Uh, really dive into quality, design, features, and brand. Now we have these two headphones here, and you will notice that uh, the one on the left is just generic, and the one on the right is the Beats by Dr. Dre. Now when you look at quality design and features, you probably would always say that the Beats by Dr. Dre are better, and that's a great example of branding. Uh, I mean, I would agree with that just looking at the pictures, uh, but when uh, we look at you know how we're gonna market our product, it's trying to get that same look, the headphone on the left, that we do as the right, but maybe it's going to be a little less uh, quality, right? A little more inexpensive. Uh, it's not going to cost $300 uh, when we're trying to sell the Beach by Dre. Maybe it's going to cost $100. So again, kind of give you that same feel and the same look uh, for the Beats by Dr. Dre, but not actually uh, having that price point of $300. Now we go to our next one, and that's all about variety. And as you can tell, uh, sticking with the Beats by Dre, uh, all different colors, right? Not everyone's going to want black. People are going to want different colors. So variety, is that going to be something that you're going to offer to your customers, to your products? Uh, but I will say that a variety is not always needed. Uh, there's these two companies right here, in and out and KFC, which I know KFC has gone away from on the recent years, but companies that just focus uh, on what they do best. So in and out burgers, that's it. They're talking about burgers, shakes, and fries. That's it. No chicken, no salad like some of these other fast food uh, companies. While you look at KFC, they were known for fried chicken and biscuits. That's it. Then they developed the sides. Now they have uh, the AMW partnership. But again, when they started out, they were just talking about fried chicken. Now let's go to the next one with product. Oh, we're talking about packaging here. Uh, again, keeping the themes with Beats by Dr. Dre. When you look at packaging, very, very big building into the brand and just the quality. As you can see here, uh, we have a very sleek cover, uh, red and black. We look at the casing that we have uh, for the headphones. And again, uh, you know, there's two trains of thought. Some people are going to say that packaging is absolutely huge as to the quality, adds to uh, the price. Uh, and then other people are going to say that uh, packaging doesn't matter at all. Uh, but again, it just it's, it's the branding. Literally, it's that branding uh, that we have with the product. Um, another great company that does this is Apple. Uh, everything's white. Everything's see-through, which is uh, fantastic. And then you look at Dell, which is all cardboard. Uh, brown and some people are just gonna say look no one's gonna keep the packaging uh, which is true uh, for me personally I keep every Apple package that I have because I don't know if it is so nice that I just want to keep it I feel like I can't throw it away or I'm throwing uh, something away nice I uh, do really talk about this more in depth that uh, we have a video here quality versus brand uh, and we will watch that now and then we'll come back and talk about it what a great 
Do you ever buy things that are ridiculously expensive just because they're so cool? Well, that's made some companies lots of money, but basketball star Stefan Marbury says that's not a good thing. Sneakers today are a hot fashion item. This hip hop video suggests they're a status symbol like a car. The hottest brand is Nike's Air Force One. They can cost $200. Some kids get robbed for their sneakers. Some have been killed. How did the simple sneaker change from a canvas and rubber thing that allows you to run in comfort to today's $100 plus high fashion statement? It began 20 years ago when Nike signed superstar Michael Jordan and then hired movie director Spike Lee to make this commercial. Yo, Mars Blackman here with my main man, Michael Jordan. Yo, Mike, what makes you the best player in the universe? Is it the vicious stunts? No, Mars. Is it the shoes? No, Mars. It's not it the shoes, shoes, said Jordan, but no. the commercial scream. It's gotta be the shoes. Shoes, shoes, shoes. shoes. And this led to a world where many kids consider $100 plus sneakers, even $200 sneakers, necessary. These kids say they'll insult kids they catch in cheap shoes. Somebody walk around and be like, oh, yo, those, those feet are pop. Those are beat down. How much, what, you got them from Payless? <laughs> it's not surprising that some kids have this attitude when today's commercials imply sneakers could be objects of worship. And they'll help you jump higher and run faster, just like your heroes. And athletes in movies tell kids, you're uncool if you wear the wrong shoe. Why does this young man have a girlfriend? You got the wrong shoes on, man. You got on white Adidas. Everybody know the shoe is nice. Nike and other brands have made millions off this ridiculous conceit. Now Nike even has stores that sell $2,000 sneakers. Anaconda and calfskin leather with 18 karat gold accessories, and then we have the crocodile version of it. Enter Stefan Marbury, the NBA star often called Starbury. He grew up poor in this housing project in New York City. It was a tough neighborhood growing up, you know. What'd your mother say when you tried to buy a $150 Air Jordan? She just wasn't spending that type of money for, for sneakers. Why'd you beg her for the shoe? Because it was just a shoe to have. You know, it was like, it was a fashion statement. One he couldn't afford. Some sneakers that cost $150? No, sir, that's not happening. I mean, that was like an automatic no. Anybody that would take their money and buy a pair of sneakers that don't have no food in their house is silly. $200 in my house, that was groceries, but I mean, that was groceries for the month with coupons and rain checks. <laughs> that was it. So when Marbury became Starbury, earning $17 million a year, he said enough. He would come out with a line of sneakers that sell for less than $15. Not only did I say enough, but I'm putting my foot inside the same exact shoe that everyone is spending their money on. Even though they're cheap, yep. you wear them in the real game. They're affordable, not cheap. Affordable means $14.98 at every store. And while Kobe Bryant got $45 million and LeBron James $90 million to put their name in some Nike shoes, Marbury asked for no upfront money. I don't take any money. I You're making money, money based on how well they do. But will they do well? Will kids buy a low-priced sneaker? Hey, excuse me, can I have your attention, please? Uh, we ask that y'all be patient. Apparently, yes. In city after city, kids and parents rushed in. The chain of stores that sells the shoes sold out two months' inventory in just three days. Most shoes are like $80, 90 You know, some families don't have that kind of money to go out and get that price of shoes, and these are only $14.98. You know, that's, that's real nice that he made them that cheap. Mothers told Marbury, I love you. You don't know what you've done for my family. Marbury couldn't hold back tears. I just wish that somebody would have thought of this idea when I was raising my children. Seven months after the sneakers debut, they continue to sell well. 
Like Starbucks, he thought about the kids. He thought about who can afford the Jordans. So he put his sneakers to be cheap so other kids could buy sneakers. But are they good sneakers? This is cheap stuff. 15 bucks? Can't be any good. Nah, this is not cheap at all. This is star quality right here. So why do people pay 150 bucks? You know, why do they pay it? I think it's just, you know, the name. If you take my shoe and you take a $150 shoe, cut it down to half, it'll do the same exact thing. Really? The most important thing, keep in mind... We ask Howard Davis, a professor of shoe design, if there were significant differences between the $15 shoes and those $100-plus Air Jordans. So he cut both shoes up, and he and others in the business concluded... They're constructed the same way. Now, the Air Jordans do have this thing that looks like an air vent, but, oops, it's closed. What ventilation can you get if there's a blockage here? Still, Air Jordan customers could say, my shoe has leather in it. Leather is very expensive, but it doesn't feel any more comfortable on the foot. It doesn't make the ball player play ball better. It's more of a cosmetic thing. And the Air Jordans have a better box. They throw the box away, but it's shiny. It has a gloss on it. The logos are padded to give it depth. Those are some of the reasons why these shoes sell for more than $100. It's fashion, and fashion is built on hype. Some kids are figuring it out. I think they're robbing kids for their money, just $150 for just a pair of sneakers. So think about that when someone tells you his expensive shoes help him jump higher. Them shoes ain't going to make you jump higher. It's definitely not going to make you run faster. It does nothing but say that you got a $150 pair of shoes on. That's it. Well, it sounds like people who pay the 150 bucks are just getting ripped off. You said video. I absolutely love this video. Uh, one because I do like sports. I do like Nike. And uh, but we're looking at this quality versus brand. You know, when you look at a Nike basketball shoe that's gained you know 100, 150, and then you have Stefan Marbury who's selling his for just under 25 dollars. It really brings this up. Hey, it can't be good quality, but as you can see, uh, the researchers uh, and you know look at it and go, it's actually the same quality, and there's no a buy off. But again, the packaging, you know, the leather, the air ventilation, so a really, really big. And again, the only thing that you can talk about the difference is branding. You know, it's a cool factor. Uh, I'm gonna say this: if Stefan Marbury wasn't an NBA star, those shoes would not be as popular. Again, he has that brand. It is a cool factor of why it is going. For so much that it is. Uh, now to finish up our a little talk about product, I have a quote right here from Thomas Watson. Hey, a product is something made in a factory. A brand is something that is bought by the customer. Very, very interesting. Okay, they're buying the brand, not the product. A product can be copied by a competitor. A brand is unique. Uh, we just kind of saw that in the video. And then a product can be quickly outdated and a successful brand is timeless. Okay, so really brings that whole uh, you're trying to build a brand. And we will look even more uh, examples of this through our activities where it is brand. And when you think about it, what things are you buying that you probably know or maybe a little bit too much? Uh, but again, you just enjoy uh, buying the brand. You believe in the brand. Uh and, you know, in all those aspects. The next thing that you need to do is if you have not been filling out your lecture notes, please do that. Also, look at your marketing analysis worksheet. Fill uh, those in. And again, guys, this is uh, questions that I'm asking this night so you can just uh, write down key terms. It's for you to actively think about uh, what we just talked about and apply it. All right, guys, welcome back to part two of the market analysis lecture. Today, we're going to be talking about price. Now, just a reminder, when we are looking through this lecture, our uh, goals is that, we, that we're going to develop a plan where we can identify our market, uh, we can reach our market, and we can keep or even increase our market. The P's of the marketing mix, remember, uh, there's four, five, seven, even FC9, but we're just going to focus on four. Uh, last time we talked about product. Uh, today we're going to talk about price, so the list, uh, the discount, the payment period, and credit. So let's go ahead and start looking. So one thing that we just need to know overall with uh, pricing is the cost, meaning what is our 
fixed cost and what is our variable cost. So when we look at fixed cost, this is something that's not going to change month to month. Uh, so you look at rent, maybe salary, uh, and even subscription. Uh, when we look at variable, that could be supplies, that could be uh, per hour workers, or it could be gas, right? Changes uh, week to week. Now, when we're actually looking at setting the price for a certain product, we need to know what is our labor, what are the materials, how much do we want to make a profit on, what is our competition, and then what is supply and demand, most importantly, the market uh, willing to buy our product for. So let's kind of take an example here. Uh, I have 150 pencils that I'm trying to make. And our labor is $5 an hour. Now, I'm not paying them $5 an hour, but when you break down to make 150 pencils, it only costs me $5. The materials for the wood is two and lead. My profit margin, I want to get 200%. Okay? Uh, so every time I sell a pencil, I can make two more. Uh, the competition is selling it from 10 to $20. And then when I'm really looking at the market, what's successful um, on Amazon, on eBay, uh, I see that the market is willing to pay 10 to 15 Okay, well, looking at uh, all this research, it cost me seven dollars to make, uh, and I want to have a profit margin of two hundred. So, luckily, uh, seven dollars. We're going to sell that for uh, fourteen dollars. It's within the range of the competition, and within the range of the market. Uh, now, this is very, very simple. It's not always this simple to determine pricing, uh, but that is an example of what we're trying uh, to accomplish. Now, continuing the pricing, there's a couple of types like negotiation versus fixed. So you'll see these graphics right here. Negotiation cars. We walk into cars and when we're trying to buy a vehicle, we can negotiate the price. How much money we have? Are we having a trade in? What are the terms? Uh, which is very good. And again, uh, some people really like to have negotiations uh, for their products. Other people hate it. They just want a one price for everything, which you will go to the fixed. You will see the fix. I just got uh, a nice little fry soda and some chicken fingers, uh, chicken nuggets, if you would want to be um, exact. And again, we can't walk into McDonald's, Burger King, any restaurant and say, hey, I want to negotiate uh, these $3 for this meal. Okay, We just know that it is a fixed price, and if we want that meal, we're going to pay that amount of money. So again, uh, it really comes down to what your product is and how you want to determine that. Again, uh, kind of going through these uh, types, uh, kind of another avenue is you want to have penetration or skimming. So what is penetration? That means that uh, you're kind of creating havoc in the market. So you will notice right here that I have Subway. Subway did a big thing a couple years ago, geez, probably been a decade now, where they set the footlong for $5, okay, that $5 footlong was uh, huge, never seen the market. And again, as a consumer, I absolutely loved it uh, because that lowered the clock cost of everything else. Um, I was a fan of sandwiches, so that was really good that I got sandwiches for $5. But all of a sudden you saw Taco Bell, Burger King, you know, everyone had to react to Subway going $5. They had to get everything down. They had to compete with that $5 price point. A uh, skimming, okay, this is premium, then you see supreme here, that you are skimming the very top of the market, meaning that they are willing to pay ridiculous prices for goods. You look at supreme, uh, very, very popular right now, but uh, the prices for uh, long sleeves, sweatshirts, everything, backpacks, is uh, kind of ridiculous, uh, just when I look at I mean, the prices for a bag. But again, uh, that is a brand, that's a status right there, and that's what they're trying to achieve right there. They're trying to skim the top of the market. Now, some other things that we can incorporate, again, whatever uh, you want to do, uh, psychological, the prestige uh, status we just talked about with Supreme, right? Like you are having Supreme means that like I can afford maybe a $200 sweatshirt. That, that's all you're saying to the world, that I can afford $200 sweatshirt. Other ones, odd versus even, you know, $19.99 versus $20. Uh, our mind likes that 19. We don't even notice the 99. Uh, over 20, we go, oh man, it's cheaper than $20. That's what we think, even though it's not. Uh, Priceline, 
everything is always the same price, like all jeans, no matter what cut, what color, what style. Hey, it's going to be $25. We have multiple units. We see this all the time. Buy two, get the one for a dollar, get the third one free, 50 cents. You can name whatever you want. But then again, that's always very, very nice to bundle things up. Uh, and then, oh, sorry, multiple units. And then going to the bundle, uh, we have an Xbox plus two games for $300. Xbox costs $250. Games cost $50. So we're saving uh, $50 right there. And again, you're willing to kind of almost eat that because you know that you're actually going to get $300 instead of maybe only getting $50 or $100 or you know, $250. Again, taking that chance and going, look, I know I'm going to get that $300. Uh, so I'm willing to give them a little bit of discount if we know that they're going to spend a little bit more money. Uh, next one we did talk about is we're looking at uh, payment and discount. Hey, so when you look at credit, uh, are you going to offer credit to your employees to buy your products? Is it going to be 10 days? Is it going to be 30 days? Is it going to be three months? Uh, that is uh, always you know big, and again, it can go to three years. You see that all the time. And then uh, also if they pay cash, I know that's crazy uh, to think, but if you pay cash right now, are you going to get a 5 to 10% discount? You see that at the gas station sometimes. If you pay cash, you're actually going to get a lower price. Uh, but the reason why I put uh, this chair, this furniture, this is very, very popular at furniture stores, right? If you pay cash, they're going to give you a nice little discount um, or, hey, we'll give you credit for three months, 90 days, 30 days where if you pay it off, it's the same as cash. If not, you have to pay interest, you have to pay penalties. Okay, so again, what works for your company? Um, and it's not gonna work for all of them, but you gotta kinda look at what the market is doing. But again, those are options out there that I just want you guys to know. Big thing, and we already talked about this, okay? It depends on the product cycle, okay? Where are we at? Introduction, growth, maturity, and decline will determine also a lot of your price points, okay? So where is your product at in the product uh, cycle? To finish up the lecture here, okay, uh, we have Ron Johnson, uh, CEO of JCPenney, or former. Okay, pricing is actually a pretty simple and straightforward thing. Customers will not pay literally a penny more than the true value of the product. That's very, very big. What value are you bringing to your customer base to the market okay uh they're gonna set that when, when i went back to that example that's why i said i don't care what your competition is selling for what is the market willing to buy for because we have ridiculous prices if you were just going to compare it to your competition but can you actually look at the market and go you know what we're only willing to pay this uh and, and it's so true okay when we look at candy bars candy bars are a dollar if we set a candy bar for a dollar fifty or dollar seventy five uh, then we'd have a tremendous drop off because pe people aren't willing to pay that amount of money. We're talking about 50 to 75 cents. That's not a big uh, increase, but it actually is because we don't feel like that candy has that much value that is bringing to us or the market. All right. Uh, now uh, that we're done with the lecture, please go fill in your lecture notes. Uh, fill in the worksheet. Remember, guys, this is uh, for you to uh, think critically. This is an add-on to really look at your world, your environment. How does it apply? How do you see this being used, uh, again, in your environment, in your world? See you next time. All right, guys, welcome back to part three of the market analysis lecture. Hey, today we're going to be talking about place. And remember, what we're trying to create here is create a plan to identify our market uh, for reaching our market and keeping or even increasing our market. Uh, always the P's of the market mix. We're going to work on four of them. Okay, so we talked about product. We just talked about price today. We're going to talk about place. Hey, the channels, the location, inventory, and logistics. All right, so let's talk about the channels. Where can we sell our items? Do we want to be a retailer? Do we want to be a wholesaler? Okay, do we want to be mail order? Okay, or do we want to do the internet? Okay, depending on what you want. So when you look at all of these, okay, we got Best Buy. Um, and again, most companies now, you're, you got two places, you're a retail uh, or internet. Uh, Costco is a classic wholesale. Uh, Amazon, we're looking at that at the internet. Uh, but they do offer some mail order services as well. Um, they're also a wholesaler. And then uh, we look at Blue Apron. Okay, Blue Apron, again, 
Uh, it's a mail order. They're going to ship you food. They're going to send you this food where you can cook meals. And this is going to come every single week, okay, which is becoming very, very popular in clothing. Uh, at one time, this was Netflix. Not anymore. That's just strictly online. Uh, but uh, what are you paying for every single month and sending uh, to you? Now, let's look at the actual physical environment. That's another. Some of you guys are going to have a brick and mortar, okay, an actual environment. Uh, where is the location? Location, location, location. It matters. What layout are you going to have? What do the lights look like? What does the sound? What does the smell? What does the checkout, the flow, and the employees? So as you can see right here, we've got two companies, Abercrombie & Fitch, known uh, for their physical environment. Uh, and I work there, so I can easily talk about it. Right, so when you look at that, you know the layout uh, was very strategic. You know they had all of the clearance in the back of the store, so you had to walk by all the brand new stuff. The lights, it was dim, it was dark. The sound, unbelievable music, like the volume, okay, the smell had the fragrance going all the time, okay. Uh, and then we didn't even had a checkout procedure that we had to say we had to say. Uh, hey, have you checked out our new cologne, our new fragrance? You know, we had to say that. Uh, and again, they're trying to create this environment. Young people, dark lighting, uh, loud music, okay, and the smell. We had to go walk around and spray the clothes every 15 minutes. And then the company kind of didn't believe that we were doing enough when I mean us, like the whole entire uh, workforce. So they actually installed machines where they released the fragrance every 10 minutes. Uh, and again, your employees, what does that look like? Do you have them dressed a certain way? Do you have them wear certain colors? Are you going to have them to say taglines, okay? At Abercrombie & Fitch, when you walked in, you had to say, hey, how's it going? Not what's up. Hey, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Uh, Apple is another company that is known for this, right? Their layouts, uh, you, know, you just walk in and you have free space to move around and do everything. Their employees uh, you know, are always wearing the same color, you know, they're to help you, uh, to check out their, their checkout processes. You just meet an employee. There is no checkout counter. So very, very big, uh, with that. And again, we just kind of talk about this in the second, second semester. We'll actually, uh, have some activities. Now inventory, inventory is very, very big. Okay. Uh, so again, inventory, your products, what are you going to do? There's some different levels. You have drop shipping. You don't make it until it's ordered. Okay. Uh, which, uh, Definitely keeps the cost down on inventory, but again, when you someone gets ordered, you just can't put it in a box and ship it. Yeah, you have to make it that process. Uh, you only know which one uh, will fit your business. When you look at a restaurant, yeah, we kind of want drop shipping. You make it when I order it, not that it's just sitting there. Uh, par levels. So is there minimums, right? We need to have 10 of these sweatshirts in every single size. We need to have 20 of these pencils, whatever you want. Hey, uh, and then uh, first in, first out. Hey, that's a very, very uh, big uh, inventory. So again, the first inventory made is a first inventory out. Okay, we're not uh, going to keep our old stuff around. It's okay. We made these first, so if we get orders, these are the first one to go. Uh, and then kind of just always having that rotation. So think about what works uh, for your company. Uh, specifically, and what would you want to do with inventory? Because it's such a big thing because it does cost, right? If you make 50 sweatshirts, okay, that cost of 50 sweatshirts is sitting in your garage, in your warehouse, okay? And uh, again, you have to pay the people that are making that stuff. So it's taking away cash flow from maybe other projects, maybe from marketing, paying employees. Uh, next one and the last one fit is logistics. Hey, what does that mean? So we look at this, a fulfillment uh, situation where you have a third party that you actually ship all of your inventory to them. So when an order is placed, they will actually get everything together and they will ship it for you. Uh, great. Or do you want to do that? You know, do you want to take the time to put in that care uh, for your product? Okay. We have um, a couple of companies here. Amazon has a fulfillment. Uh, ShipStation has a fulfillment, and then uh, Printful where. Uh, they will actually, that does everything where you can uh, have a design. If someone buys a design and wants it on a shirt, they'll print the shirt, they'll ship it for you, and they'll just give you a check. All you have to do is come up with the design. So very, very interesting and actually becoming very, very popular. But again, you're paying for something that you could possibly do. What is the reward? What is the negative? Okay, what is the pitfall? Ending uh, on the quote, okay, uh, talking about place, this is uh, from the CEO of McDonald's at one time, kind of the guy that got it running, okay, Ray Kroc. 
I'm not in the hamburger business. I'm in the real estate business. Talking about place and location. Okay, very, very big. When you look at McDonald's, they're all over the place, right? They got great uh, real estate, right? Great location. So again, are they more in the hamburger or the real estate, right? People go to McDonald's is because they make it so easy. Does it actually taste good? I don't know. That's your decision for me, not so much, so I don't care where it's at. Uh, I'm gonna go right by McDonald's and go find another burger joint if I want a burger joint. But again, it's that ease of having it uh, in the right location. I know they're in uh, Walmart, you know, again, People are shopping, oh, let's go in, uh, go to McDonald's because I want a hamburger. So a very, very big location. Location is absolutely huge. So as always, make sure we go. We're filling in our lecture notes and make sure we do our market analysis worksheet. See you in the next lecture. All right, let's take a look at the last lecture in our marketing analysis unit. Remember, our whole entire goal was we we're going to develop a plan to identify our market, uh, reach our market, and then keep or even increase this market. We've been talking about the four P's of the marketing mix, product, price, place, and today we're going to be talking about promotion. So advertising, sales, marketing, public relations. The first thing we want to talk about promotion is advertising, okay? How are you going to advertise? Is it going to be in a video? Is it going to be in a song? Is it going to be in a picture, graphic design, or a conversation kind of in person? Which one do you think is the best advertisement for your company? Uh, notice how I did not do TV, uh, social media, uh, billboards. We will get to those, but again, what do you want your advertising to be? Is it all video? Is it song? Is it picture? Like I said, graphic design or conversation? Now, no matter which one that you do pick, uh, you're going to have some types. Do you want it to be funny? Do you want it to be motivational? Do you want it to be sexual? Do you want it to be endorsement, pop culture, or controversial? Now, let's go into the media outlets, okay? So you are going to have print, newspaper, magazine, TV, outdoor, social media, radio, and in-person and influencer. Influencer is very, very new in the last three years. Uh, it's become very, very big with YouTube and uh, Instagram, Snapchat, as absolutely exploding. Okay, so now we're looking at influencer marketing, uh, which was back in the kind of just endorsements, but now it opens up to a lot more people uh, and besides just celebrities. A quote that we're going to get right here is uh, what I really des decides consumers to buy or not buy is the content of your advertising, not its forum. Okay, so I think that's very, very big. Again, it's the actual content where you put in. Uh, we'll kind of really have classroom discussions. Is TV worth it now? What about billboards? You know, radio, print, you know, the traditional ones, or just everything on social media. Where is the attention at uh, that we will look at? But really, once you start thinking, how much money do you want to spend on your advertising? What type of advertising do you want? Again, picture, video, song, graphic design, influencer, kind of the conversation, right? Person to person. Uh, now, let's go ahead and fill out our lecture notes. And let's finish that marketing analysis worksheet.